Hello, this is Sam, and this is Rigamator version 1.0. This is an overview tutorial of all the parts in Rigamator version 1.0. And here is a list of the things you can do within Rigamator. There is a loop expression builder, which allows you to build a loop in or loop out expression and apply it to all the selected properties that have keyframes. This is done through a custom interface allowing you to quickly select the loop method, loop type, loop modifier type, and the loop modifier amount. You can create a library of animation templates. The animation templates themselves are created by extracting your character's animations and saving the information gathered as a special type of template only to be used within Rigamator. You can apply animation templates. Using your saved animation templates, you are able to apply them to any part of your character or the entire character regardless of the size and dimensions of the character. You can save, import and export animation templates. This allows you to share your created templates. You can also import templates created by other people as long as they are both using Rigamator. The most important part of Rigamator is the basic pose. To be able to create and apply an animation template, you will need to set up a basic pose for your character. This basic pose is labelled throughout the script and will always give you warnings when your character needs to be in this pose. You can turn this off via the settings menu if you feel confident in not needing to be reminded. The basic pose is your character stretched in each relevant direction. The arms should be at max length and horizontal. The legs should be at max length and vertical. The spine of your character should be straight and be at max length between all the ligaments. Also, any other part of your character should always be set to its most upright position. The basic pose only needs to be used once to create your character's nodes, which will be used later. If your character is already animated, you can set your playhead to a part with no keyframes and set the pose at this time. Once the pose has been set and you've created the nodes, you can delete these keyframes. There are four stages to Rigamator, these being the load stage, the view stage, the controller stage, and the template stage. Each stage needs the user to input information to move on to the next stage. The loading stage is where we set up our character within Rigamator. This is known as building a rig. There are three different options when loading your rig. To see which rig you currently have loaded, there is a small text bar with a bit of information. If your character was loaded from a saved rig, the text will display rig, along with the tool to build the rig, and the rig saved name. If the rig was unsaved, it will display unsaved as the rig name. If you loaded the rig via the comp, then it will display loaded as the rig name. When first building a rig, or creating a new rig, you should left click on the load button. You will then be presented with a pose check. If the pose is correct, then continue on to the next step. This step allows you to select the tool that you use to create your character. These being Duic, Rubber Hose, Limber, and Joysticks and Sliders. You can only select one option, and this should always be the one used for your character. Selecting the wrong one may cause some issues in your animation template. Moving forward, you'll be presented with the controller setup. This is the longest part of the script, but only needs to be done once per rig. Clicking on any of the controllers will open a new window with three drop down menus. The first option is the controller layer. This is the controller relative to your selected controller in the menu. Note, this is normally where all the effects are held to control your limb. The second drop down will be the root of your limb. For a quick example, the root for a hand limb would be the shoulder or arm joint. The last drop down can either be set to the controller, same as step 1, or it can be set to the end of the limb. This mainly applies to Duic. For each rigging tool that you used, the way you build the controllers will be slightly different. However, all rigs can have a joystick added. To explain the different methods, I've broken this up into their relative sections. When loading a rig with Duic and selecting one of the controllers, you will notice that the drop down options should be pre filled. In the case they are not pre filled, you can open the guide within Rigamator, scroll to the bottom, and look at Duic controllers. There will be a list of what should be placed at each drop down. 
When loading our rig with rubber hose or limber, the drop down options will not be pre filled. Rubber hose and limber work in the same way when building a limb. You'll be given two controller points and then your limb. The first drop down should be set to the end controller of your limb. This is the controller that houses all your limb effects. The second drop down should then be set to the start controller of your limb. The last drop down should be set to the same option as the first drop down. As you can set the name of your limbs and controllers to whatever you like in limber and rubber hose, it's impossible to give you a definite answer on how to fill these out. But you can look at the way Duik is set up and follow that for the relevant controllers. Additional information for rubber hose and limber when using solid shape layers for the body or head can be found in the long walkthrough tutorial. When loading a rig with joysticks and sliders, the first drop down should be set to the joysticks. The second drop down should be set to the joystick origin and the last drop down should be set to the joystick origin again. Once you've completed building your rig, you have an option to save the rig. I do recommend this, especially when building a rig with rubber hose or limber. This rig can then later be accessed in case you delete it or remove the character node. Once you've saved your rig, Realmator will create a bunch of character nodes. These nodes will always be placed at the bottom of your comp as guide layers. They will also have a single marker on each of them. This marker holds important information regarding the node, so please do not delete it. Holding the shift key and left clicking on the load button will open a pose check menu. If your pose is correct then carry on. This will then load all of your saved rigs. You can use this menu to replace any of your lost nodes in your comp or you can delete previously saved rigs. If you select a rig and click OK, it will then add all of the rig's nodes to your comp. Any nodes that already exist will not be replaced, and you will receive an error warning with a list of nodes that have not been replaced. The fastest way to load your rig after you have built it is by holding the command Windows key and left clicking the load button. This will load all nodes from your current comp and build your rig from them. If you were to delete a node, it will simply load whatever nodes are still in the comp. Once you've finished loading your rig with any of the previously mentioned methods, you will now be presented with the view stage. Within the view stage, you are able to select which direction your character is facing. Please make sure you select the correct view for your character, as any animation templates created will only be available in the selected view. After selecting the view, you will now be presented with the controller stage. The controller stage will allow you to tap into each part of your character and create or apply an animation template. A controller will only be active if the controller exists in your rig. If you were to delete a node from your comp or not create one of the controllers, it will not be active. By selecting an individual controller, you are selecting that part of your rig. You can apply or create individual animation templates for the selected controller. If you would like to select all the controllers, you can select them by pressing the controller at the very end. After selecting a controller, you will be presented with the last stage, the template stage. Within the template stage, you will see an active list of all animation templates you have for the selected controller. You can optionally search through the list using the search bar, or you can manually go through the list. To create an animation template, we head over to the little plus icon on the bottom left. Note, the animation template is created from the controller layer set up in the load stage. After clicking the little plus, we are then presented with a new window. This window has two options, a file name and a folder. You can insert the file name you would like to use for this animation template. The file name is a reference for you when you come back to it. The folder option has a few different things to choose from. Selecting none will not add your animation template to a folder and will just place it directly into the directory. Selecting new folder will allow you to add a folder name. This folder will then be placed into the directory and include your animation template. If you have any folders already in your directory, you can add your animation template to these. When saving an animation template, the template will be saved with a tool that we use to set up your rig. If you use Juic, then your final animation template file will be saved as, whatever the name is, .juic. Once your animation template has been created, 
you will see it available inside the animation selection view. You can delete any animation template from your system using the little minus button. However, this is non-reversible, so please use it with caution. Once you've got some animations, you can then apply these to your character. Select the animation template you would like to use and then click either the Add Solid or Add Null button. These will both do exactly the same thing. However, the new controller will either be a solid or a null. Once you click either of these buttons, your new animation will be applied to the character. This works in a number of ways. Firstly, your original character's keyframes and animation will not be changed. They will still be accessible on the character's controller. A new controller will be added to the comp with a name of A, the controller name, and the animation template name, A standing for animation. This is so you can understand what this is. This new controller contains all of the animation template information. The original controller for your character will get an added Procedo effect. This effect will be P, the controller name, and the animation template name, P standing for parent. Within this Procedo effect, there are a number of effects you can play with. The first effect is Target. Target is what layer your controller is trying to copy. You can change this to another animation template controller, but I wouldn't advise changing it as you may experience a few expression errors. The next effect is Connection. The connection is a slider from 0% to 100%. This is the connection between the current controller and the target. At 0%, the controller will not copy the target and 100% it will copy the target. You can also select which properties you would like to copy. You can copy the position, rotation, opacity and the effects. Note that if you have two parent effects set at 100% connection, your controller will try to calculate the middle ground between these. When creating your animation controllers, they will automatically be connected at 100%. To change this, you can open the settings and turn off Auto Connect Controllers. You can apply animation templates from any rig to any rig. However, the effects from controller will not be copied over. When applying animation templates to your character, you can also use the settings menu to control which part of the template will be applied. The settings menu is fairly straightforward in what it will do, and there is a mini guide inside Rigamator to explain these in further detail. If you would like to see the duration of an animation template, you can click the little marker in the top left hand corner of the script panel. This will grab the duration of the animation template and set your work area to that duration. If the animation template doesn't contain any keyframes, it will produce an error telling you exactly that. If you would like to delete an animation template from your character, simply select the relative animation template inside the view and click the delete button. This will remove that animation template and all the relative information from your character. If you just delete the animation controller, this may cause expression errors within your comp, so I highly recommend you do not do that. Going into the settings menu, you also have the option to import and export your animation templates to share with others. Clicking on the import will allow you to select a file with the extension .rigimator. Please note, I cannot be responsible for the content within these files downloaded from the internet. Please make sure you scan them for any viruses to protect yourself. Clicking the export will open a new window. This window is the export screen. You'll have two views. The one on your left is your current animation templates that are on your system. The view on the right is your temporary export folder. You can use the plus button to add animation templates from your system into the temporary folder. You can add single files as well as entire directories. Please note, however, the search feature at the top is purely visual. Adding or removing animation templates while searching for them can cause the wrong information to go into your temp animation template folder. Clear the search before trying to add or remove animation templates. Clicking the minus button will remove animation templates from your temp animation template folder. This will not remove the animation from your system, it will just remove it from the temp folder. Clicking cancel in the export menu will just cancel the window. The temp folder will still exist with all the template animations added to it. This is so you can easily go back into this menu at any time and remove what you need and don't need. For Mac users, you are able to use the export button to export your temp folder. Your temp folder will be zipped into a .rigimator file and placed on your desktop. The file will be named animation underscore templates. 
You can then share this with other users to share your animations. For Windows users, the process is ever so slightly different as exporting and importing isn't fully supported on Windows computers. You can use this method to get the same result, it just takes a few extra steps. First go into the AE scripts folder hidden in your support files. This folder will contain information on a few of your scripts. We can ignore them. Head over to Rigimator and locate the temp folder. Go inside the temp folder and zip up the animation template folder. Rename the zip folder to .rigimator. To import on Windows you do the same steps as before. However, you unzip the folder you received into rig animation templates. Once this is done, you'll be able to access the animation templates on your system. Clicking the little keyframe icon in the top left hand corner will allow you to build a loop expression for the select properties. Once you open the window, you'll be presented with three drop down options. The first option is the loop in out state, and you can set this to loop in, loop out, or loop in and out. The second step is the loop type. You can choose between cycle, ping pong, offset, and continue. The third step is if you wanted to add a modifier, you can then choose between none, duration, and keyframe. Depending on what option you selected, the fourth step will be added. This fourth step will then ask you for a number. That number is in respect to the modifier. If the modifier is set to duration, the number is seconds. If the modifier is set to keyframe, the number is keyframes. Once clicking OK, it will apply your expression to the selected properties. If the selected properties don't contain any keyframes, it will give you an error message instead.